everyone, welcome back to my channel, Lindsay Tries It, where I, Lindsay, have decided to push myself out of my comfort zone and try new things. Today I will be trying a new recipe. Now this recipe is a little bit more special or different. That's because of the cookbook I found it in. This cookbook is called Commissary Kitchen, so just as the name says, it is recipes using typical or classic commissary items, and particularly in this case, it's for individuals who were or have or are incarcerated. If you've ever browsed your Netflix, you'll see there's a ton of shows and documentaries about the prison systems and the jails. Um, and I'm someone who's definitely watching all of those. I just find it really interesting to me. It's like fascinating to see how individuals kind of make their own new like society with all these specific rules and stuff. Even though they're being kind of like ostracized from society, you recreate some sort of, I guess, normalcy for yourself. And so for me, it's just really interesting to see how people do that. So I'm always, I'm always watching some of those shows. And a lot of the times they will cut to an individual or have like a segment about cooking while incarcerated. And it's very interesting to see because as you can imagine, you have limited access to equipment, ingredients, electricity, those sorts of things that uh, would make traditional cooking perhaps a little bit easier to do. But that is where the creativity comes in. So when you have limited ingredients and limited equipment, etc., what do you do so that you can, you know, make something that tastes maybe a little bit better than the regular breakfast, lunch, and dinner that's served? And often I would hear and watch that sometimes bedtime can be, or lights out can be at like seven or eight. And you know, if the last time you ate was at four or five, you might be getting a little bit hungry. So inmates would get creative and create things, create recipes out of the items that they could purchase from commissary to, um, you know, fulfill that craving, fulfill that need. If you Google prison recipes, there is a ton out there. It's really interesting to see what some people have been able to create. If anyone's familiar with Orange is the New Black, the Netflix show, main character Piper, I think it's influenced by her true story. And she has a really famous recipe online that I think she wrote about in her book, which is a cheesecake that you can make while on the unit and it's pretty interesting. I will link to the recipe down below if you're interested. So today I'm going to be trying a recipe that's pretty popular, meaning that I just have seen a lot of variations online. It's talked about in the cookbook. So I think a lot of people have used this idea as maybe even a base to what they want and then add different things depending on what you like. And that would be a prison burrito, also known as the Dorito burrito, which so fun to say Dorito burrito. And it is a take on a burrito that you can make possibly in the comforts of your own cell if in prison. Um, I'm gonna try and make it or recreate it today and we'll see what it tastes like. So there's three main ingredients to this recipe. One being, of course, the Doritos chips themselves. And again, I've seen variations online that some people use jalapeno or flaming hot, ch uh, what are they called? Flaming hot Cheetos. You could also add them to this. I just went for the classic Doritos. You also need a pack of ramen noodles and also a, <laughs> a uh, pepperoni stick. Now, the only one I could find was uh, hot. So I'm a little bit nervous because I don't tolerate hot foods very well. So this should be interesting. Okay, so these three ingredients plus some warm water or water as hot as you can get it will create the prison burrito. The name prison burrito isn't because everything that we're gonna make is gonna be like put into a tortilla or anything. You could do that, I suppose, but I believe it's called a burrito because of the shape that you um, put everything together in that it kind of looks like a burrito. First step is to crush up all of our crunchy materials. Now often the chips will be crushed by stepping on them continuously until you get like a powder like consistency. I saw some people online using their Cuisinart or their food processor. I'm not going to be using that. I'm just going to try and crush them by hand. I'm holding it closed because I already broke the seal. So hopefully I don't make a huge mess. You wouldn't want to do this at like a quiet time because it's kind of like if you've ever had a crunchy snack or you've been somewhere where someone's had a crunchy snack and it's like very obvious. We can all hear it. Crunching slower doesn't make it less quiet. I can still hear you just prolonging the crunch. Oh, 
burritos are sharp. Okay, so now I have a fine Dorito dust. Let me just show you there. Come on in. Mm. Next up is the ramen noodles. I'm not bleeding from that Dorito chip I ate before. And just like the Doritos, I'm also going to crush these. Okay, so now that I have all the noodles crushed up, I am going to add them back into my Doritos bag. Now we have something that looks a little bit like this, probably exactly what you thought crushed up ramen noodles and crushed up Doritos would look like. So now that we have that, the last step is adding a little bit of protein and adding the Slim Jim. Oh, it's a slow heat. It's building on the back of my tongue. I'm just gonna break off pieces and put them right in because I would believe if you were incarcerated, you wouldn't have access to something like a knife for chopping. You shouldn't, um, maybe a plastic knife, maybe a, a lid of a tin of something if you, if you had it, but I'm just using my fingers and I'm ripping it. I'm just not gonna, I'm not gonna put the whole thing, I don't think. This is what it looks like inside and I'm going to go get some water. Now it says that you should try and get water as hot as you can and that is because you need to cook those noodles inside of the bag. So I'm not gonna boil water because I don't think that's necessarily realistic for a lot of individuals who would be making this recipe, might not have access to something like a microwave. So I'm just gonna take some hot water from the tap and add it in. Now I wanna add enough water to sort of just meet all the ingredients, which is about here in the bag. Like the Doritos and the meat kinda smell good. Kinda smells good. I'm going to add our water. If you're potentially grossed out by mushed food, look away. It looks just as you would expect. We have the Doritos, we have the noodles, we have some of that pepperoni, and now it is with some warm water. And so now what I'm gonna do is you kind of burp the bag. Now that my bag is sealed up, it needs some time to cook. They suggest if you have like a dish towel or I've seen people use oven mitts or I don't know, an extra t-shirt or something, you're gonna wanna roll or wrap this in here to keep the heat in to allow for the noodles and everything to cook and soften up. Okay, so I've rolled up my package here. And again, I saw in the cookbook, they suggested they might put it under their mattress or somewhere that would just sort of really keep it nice and warm. I am just going to, uh, I have a sweatshirt here. I'm gonna put it under my sweatshirt with my um, tea towel as well. Give it about 15 minutes to let all that moisture hopefully soak up and I'm gonna give it a try. Okay, that's been 15 minutes. Here's our little burrito. I'm gonna open it up, give it a try. Maybe not a perfect burrito shape, but um, I think it looks enough like one that I believe it's a burrito. You can see all like the Dorito cheese crumbs <laughs> right there. A lot of the pasta, the, the, the noodles right there. It's got a good weight to it, to be honest. You can add ketchup on top. You could add mayonnaise on top, I guess, if you wanted to. I'm gonna try it au naturel. Uh, let's try a little from the front and then a little from the back. Oh, I can feel that the ramen is cooked. It's very soft, spongy. Hmm, interesting. The pasta's cooked. It's kind of spongy a little bit. I feel like there's a bit of a chemical aftertaste happening. Let's get some of the ch cheesy stuff over here. I thought it was gonna be much saltier, but it's not. I still think it's good to leave out that that uh, little salt package because that might have made it too salty, but maybe using half the pack would be a good idea. Let me try a little piece of that spicy pepperoni. completely no chip crunch left. It's all pretty soft. You know, I find 
I'm actually surprised. The pepperoni is not as hot as I thought. And I kind of like it better with the pepperoni flavor. So adding more spices and stuff might be... Look, that's a lot of food. Might be an interesting take on this. Also, look at the color. Ooh. I find the pepperoni definitely adds a little something. My wrist is getting tired from holding this. I've seen a really popular recipe online for like a jailhouse birthday cake and it's like a honey bun with peanut butter, another honey bun, peanut butter, and crushed Oreos and that sounds amazing. If that's what I had access to and I was hungry, that's a great idea. I would make something just like that. You know what, it's creative, who am I to judge? I think it's great that you're making do with what you have. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, please let me know in the comments down below. And I hope you stay tuned to see what I get up to next time. Do I think someday my kids will come home from work, from university and say, mom, please make us one of those homemade jailhouse burritos. No, I don't. But you know what? It's creative. It is innovative. It does the job. I think that's pretty awesome if you ask me.